Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode of Prado 150 out of here. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different to the usual. Um, we're just going to introduce you to Mrs. Prado 150 out of here, Shelley. And uh, yeah, she's just going to go through some stuff that's been happening with her and her medical uh, condition. So uh, the reason that we thought we'd uh, share this with you is just gives you an opportunity to get to know a bit more about who we are. And also, um, I'm sure there's many, many guys out there that know of or if not yourself of someone that's got some medical condition and uh, we just say well whatever it is obviously within reason uh, make it your aim to get out there uh, make the most of life we don't know how long we've got until till it's over type of thing and uh, yeah we're trying to do that get out there with the kids and uh, yeah so um, you'll see we've had a bit of a change uh, in relation to the treatment so uh, that enables Shelley to in the future to be able to get out there and uh, yeah have a good time with us so she's already had a night in the uh, camper trailer and I've been told that I need to fix up the mattress to make it a bit more comfortable for her. So Shelly? Yes? Mrs Prado, 150 out of here. Yeah this one's better. Well, you slept yeah. in the... It has, um, it has more flavour. You slept in the rooftop for the first time. I did. How was that? It was a little bit hard the bed uh but it was quite it, apart from that it was quite pleasant so she's as keen as we are which is great she even wants to drive the prado and do some tracks so i went yeah beauty no worries at all so um shelly we we're at shelly beach but they spelt, they spelt it, wrong. it wrong yeah they forgot to put an e in it that's right they did yeah so uh, without any wasting any more time here we'll get straight into it eh? I'm here for four hours for dialysis. On what day? Special day today? Special day. Oh, Valentine's yeah. Day. Oh, yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, Val. Romance <laughs> <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are you? Where am I? St Andrews Hospital. There you go. Well guys, how are you going? Welcome back to Prado 150 out of here. Well, in today's video or episode, it's just a little bit different. So um, I've got Shelly next to me here, Mrs. Prado 150 out of here. You probably haven't seen too much of her. Um, we just thought we'd share with you guys a bit of our journey uh, together, of late in particular. And uh, yeah, just go through what it's like, um, I suppose, for you and in relation to some medical problems. No, that was all right. Oh, Shelley said that was all right, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep on going. Um, so, so guys, uh, I suppose I'm being the interview there. I didn't want it to quite be uh, like that, but no, I cut that bit out. So, um, yeah, we're just gonna, yeah, just share with you guys a few things. So, Shelley, over to you, hey. So, um, if we go back five years, maybe, what do you reckon? Yeah, five years, that'd be about right. Um, so, Shelley's also mum of the other three kids that are in the in the videos that you'd see. The other three? Is there another three somewhere? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully only one set of three. We'll start with it again. No, that was yeah. just making a joke for um. So um, we'll go back to the five years. So so we'll just what well, what do you reckon? We'll just go back five the five years when all this started. Sure, five years sounds good. So what happened? Uh, so at that point we were living in Mackay, and uh, I was working pretty much full time. Obviously, three younger two they were younger then five years ago. I was ago. working full. I was working. You full were working too. full time and. Um, had to have a um, just my regular checkup that I'd missed um, sort of the year before, just with moving and being busy working. Which you know, you look back and think, don't miss your appointments. That's a note to everybody. Keep up with regular appointments. Um, anyway, so yeah, had my checkup and they rang me pretty much straight away and were like, "Are you okay? Are, are you okay?" 
So what are we checking on those? <coughs> so we're checking um, kidney function. So they were like, um, are, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, yes. Until they said, you know, your, your kidney function's at 6%. So anything above 60 is okay, is, is good. Anything below 60 is starting to obviously show you decline. And if you get to 15 and below, that means that you are in end stage, like that's... You're in some trouble. You're in pretty much serious trouble. Most people don't find out that they're in any trouble until they are at between sort of 15 and 10%. So I was down at 6%. Looking back now, it was, you know, you had some good signs of something that wasn't wrong, you know, I had lots of headaches, I was extremely tired, I had quite bad brain fog and just a really uh, not wanting to care about anything really. Um, but you thought that was normal because I you thought, had three young children? That's right, I thought that was normal from working pretty much full time, three kids and a shift working husband, so I just thought that was life. But it wasn't just life. Um, so that was the start of the end really for that it was <clears throat> yeah it was to see a specialist in Brisbane and they were pretty serious on you need to start dialysis ASAP like now she couldn't believe I was really still walking around as well as I was um, at that point so yeah we came home from Brisbane I took six months off my current job there and started the process of getting things ready to start dialysis. Mm, mm. So, um, that. As, you, as you know, well, as you know, the kidney filters your your blood. So, if it's not doing that job, then you've got to find another way to um, to replace that. Otherwise, um, your body fills up with poisons. Toxins. Yeah, yeah pretty much. It, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you can basically you can die from it, can't you? Oh, absolutely, yes. So, um, well, you lead the way, but we, there's two types of dialysis that, that was yeah. available to you, wasn't there? Yes. Like one so, was a bit, um, a bit uh, less restrictive in that you could do it, you could do it from home. Yeah. So one was um, there's two types. One's called peritoneal dialysis, and the other one's hemodialysis. So peritoneal is where you have a um, a Tenkoff catheter inserted to your abdomen and it is used to fill your abdomen with fluid and you let that dwell and then you drain out the fluid and then you refill and that process is done um, a few times a day through manual bags or you can use a machine for your sleep time so 10 hours and the machine does the filling and the draining yourself rather than you doing it manually. So in layman's terms you get a tube stuck in your stomach <laughs> and this stuff goes in sits in there for a while and then comes out That's and, the, right. and the, what comes out is the um, the filtered process isn't it? That's yeah. right so it's a glucose um, fluid and so it sucks all the toxins out of your system and then you yeah you drain that out and then you put fresh fluid in and it does that whole process again so there's some um, pros and cons with that Obviously, you know, adding glucose to your body on a 24-hour basis, obviously you can uh, gain makes a bit of fat. weight. Makes you fat. <laughs> does. Does. We're, just, we're, we're, just, we're talking we're just about saying that. as it is. Yeah. And, and it probably put on a good 15 kilos over the five years um, from being on that, just with the glucose and, and the, the less ability to go exercising because of the tummy surgeries and used to think you're holding, pregnant. yeah, holding the carrying the fluid, you used to get asked, you know, if you're pregnant because when's a baby due? You know, carrying an extra 1.8 liters of fluid in your tummy obviously isn't the most um, attractive or comfortable thing to do. So I did that for um, the nearly five years, four and a half or so years, uh, and at the same time as getting that set up, um, we also had to get a what they call a fistula put in which is where they join a, a vein and an artery in your arm so that it can create a bigger vessel um, because when you do hemodialysis it's um, your blood's taken out at a very high pressure so 
so it's taken out at around 300 rate pressure. So a fistula is, um, people can have it either in their lower arms or their upper arms. If, you, if they've got no right vessels in your arms, then you can, can have it in your leg, which uh, some people do, but not a lot of people. So mine's it made, was made in my lower arm. Um, and so you can sort of see that there's, probably, I don't know if you can see, but it tracks along here and then it goes up here. But this is the part that's used. Um, so they're very big needles when you do hemodialysis. Um, I'm just getting rained on. Hang on a moment. Pump speed, we've got your arterial pressure and venous pressure. Uh -huh. We want that above negative 200 and that below 200, so they're really great. Okay. This is um, your hourly UF rate and the total UF goal, and then what we've taken off so far. Sure. You know, and this is the big one, the time, the time. remaining on yep. the clock. You've had um, a little bolus of heparin, yep. a one mil bolus, and you're running at 700 mils per hour. So I don't know if you can see, so it comes along, mine was created here, comes along and travels up here for me. So it has grown, they, like, like a caterpillar here, you call it. Um, and I don't know, you can tell if you can see the line of scarring. So the needles are very big, so they leave um, quite a good scar line. Um, got a good bruise at the moment. If the needle touches the wall of your vessel, it can um, create a, a, a bruise. So slowly going down, it doesn't hurt, but yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so you get yeah, a few good so looks, eh, when, you're, when you're out in the public. Yeah, huh? you get a few good looks. Might, um, yeah, so we, I've done, um, so I did the peritoneal dialysis for, yeah, nearly four and a half years and that got to a point though that we were doing, that I was doing it, um, I had a manual bag through the day and then 10 hours on the machine at night and I was pretty much at the limit of what it could do um, in removing the toxins. So at that point we had to make the decision to go over to hemodialysis. So I've been on that now since December and I do three times a week of four hour sessions. Um, so it basically takes out, I'm there at 7.30 in the morning and I get home at about one o'clock in the afternoon. So generally feel a bit wiped out that afternoon but the next day is pretty good and that gives me the weekends off and um, yeah, feeling a lot better than I was. So um, Mr. Prado 150 out of here, over here, he likes to go camping and four wheel driving and being on dialysis has a bit of a challenge when you want to do those sorts of things. Well I have been able to go a bit of camping um, with the camper trailer but it was a little bit tricky taking the machine and just finding room for it. The machine's about this big, it was, the peritoneal dialysis machine and it needed to run on power. So um, Michael had a good go though of working out uh, inverters so that I could come and use that. But it's just a little bit, I don't know, sometimes you feel like you're a bit of a nuisance taking all your stuff and your boxes of fluid and trying to fit them in everywhere. And I know that Michael doesn't see that at all. That's just me. But um, yeah, it does take some organizing to to go camping and to things like that. So now that I'm on hemodialysis though, it um, it leaves my weekends completely free now. So I look forward to heading out in the camper trailer and doing some four wheel driving with Michael and the kids and um, yeah, Joshua's ute as well, taking his four wheel drive out with us and having a bit of fun all together as a family now. So. Michael took the kids away to Cape York and being on, I was on the peritoneal dialysis then, so that was a bit tricky taking, I would have had to have taken about a, a nearly a trailer's worth of boxes of fluid and um, yeah, it just wasn't possible to do that. So when you talked about the camping, uh, we had the MDC camper trailer, it was a forward fold and uh, yeah, we had a go with, with a inverter, um, but yeah, it did suck a bit of power out. It did, yeah. Um, but we, we, gave it a, we gave it a 
bit shopping. We, we did. Because we wanted, you know, you to not miss out. Mm. We took that yeah. was when we went to uh, bribing, we took that. Yeah, so um, there you have it, isn't it? So um, now, so you just, you've got to do that now three, three days a week. Yeah, three days a week until at such point I might get a transplant. I've been on the list for the whole time. So if anyone's got a spare kidney out there, let us know. Leave yeah. a message in the, in the comments that you've got a spare kidney that you <laughs> want to donate. It has to be a 97% match, doesn't it? That's, a, that's the other problem. Yeah, so a lot of people ask me, oh, aren't you on the list or, or, or things like that. But I've been on the list for the whole time you know, from when you start dialysis. You, you've got to go through a whole lot of process and testing, um, but it backdates to when you start. So I've been on it since March 2017. Um, but I have O positive blood and I have around 97% antibodies. Um, so that has, gives you about a 3% chance of a match for someone. So I'm on the list, <laughs> still waiting, um, hopefully one day soon. Um, but it's, um, what was I gonna say? Um, okay. Something that you'd like to happen, but um, have a you know a miracle that it happens. But in in reality, it is um, it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I'm on the what they call the deceased donor. So that's waiting and um, for someone to pass away who has the, a matching kidney. Um, I'm also in what they call the paired donor exchange, where that's Australia wide, where someone might want to donate a kidney but aren't the correct match but they might match someone else and someone in maybe Victoria or, or South Australia might be have a, a match. Um, however that still, I've been in that for two and a half, mm. two and a half years mm. now um, and that hasn't produced a match either so I'm, I'm in the hard pile at the moment. You, you know what they're going to be thinking now. They're going to be, you know, where they're going to be. You're going to be looking at me, aren't you? You're going to go, well, "Where's the kitty? They're at the back here, aren't they?" Yeah, they're right. You're going to be saying, "Well, what about your husband that's standing there? Why doesn't he donate you one?" So we we uh, we've we've had a chat about it, and um, you know, I was going to half surprise Shelley by saying, "Oh, I've gone and done all these tests and blah blah blah," but. Uh, the problem that we had was that obviously the the situation, um, if you could, uh, you know, work life out, probably the better scenario of it would be when the kids were a bit old, you know, a lot older and kind of doing their, their thing. Um, but it didn't happen that way. So the logistics of, because if you have a transplant, that's three months that you're out completely. Yeah. So when and if, and if I donate uh, a kidney, that's one that I'm completely out as well. And during that time, Shelley needs uh, a carer, and we've got three kids to look after. So we just went logistically. It just, it just wouldn't. I've, I've kind of. I mean, anything can work, but it just wouldn't have really worked. No, we May. decided that it was just not the right time for for us to go down that path at the moment. And I'm still quite um, okay. Like I'm, I'm not in. I'm not in a. Um, in a desperate position of going on, I am not coping in anything at all. So while we are okay as we are at the moment, we haven't gone down the route of uh, Michael doing that. Because like you said, uh, when you have a transplant, you need to stay in Brisbane for around eight weeks. Um, and it, for the first month or more, you need a carer who's there who can help you get to the uh, hospital for daily appointments, um, just helping you with when you come out of hospital in you know, doing food and things like that. And so obviously our kids are, you know, our eldest has got a license now, but um, the youngest, the next two are obviously still at school. And so is uh, Josh, he's still in grade 12. Um, yep. So either way, even if um, I do get a transplant, it's still obviously gonna be a big um, changing time for the whole family. Mm. And and it's not, I mean, I think a lot of people think that a transplant is solves all your problems. Um, but it doesn't actually. <laughs> it yeah, comes, it, was. <laughs> it comes with its own set of problems yeah. of, of immunosuppression. I thought I could retire and do YouTube full time, send you to work <laughs> when you get the kidney. Yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Prado 150 out of here. In his dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Prado 150 out of here, except yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, it comes with its own dramas with, you know, medications and um, 
yeah, just all things like that. So it's just one, one day at a time, honestly. It's one day at a time and that's all you can do. You can't look forward to things that, are, that might go wrong. You just really, you just get up and take the day as it is. Do what you do for that day and try and make the most of mm. each and every day that you have. And yeah. Because, um, and you've had a, you know, in that five years, you've, you've had many visits to the hospital with a couple of serious, um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, what's the word? When, when my, something's not. Yeah, right. that's right. I've had, I had no surgeries up until, I, I've never had a surgery until the last five years. And since then I've had about seven um, tummy surgeries from starting from getting the Tenkoff catheter inserted. I've had two hernias. <laughs> Um, I've had two, two bowel. bowel issues, like, and, and the last one was, um, both of them had bowel stuck in hernias um, from the catheter, and the last one caused to have a, um, a resection of the bowel. So I've had a lot of dramas from having, doing peritoneal dialysis. So um, that's the one at home, the one with the fluid. Yeah, so that's yeah. the fluid one with that's the machine. That's in my machine. news terms. That's, that's the one. Like me. Yeah, that's the one I did for about four and a half years. And so, like I said at the, earlier, there's lots of pros and cons. And pros was that you could do it at home and you had, you know, you could go out through the day and that. And um, Could you explain how that machine did it overnight? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. you slept in Yeah. So... And then that had its problems too, didn't it? Because you weren't sleeping. Yeah, everything really. everything has its pros and cons. <laughs> but we are, I mean, we are positive. We're just giving it to you as, as, as it is. And uh, what, I suppose the reason that we thought we'd um, share this with you because many people watch, you know, watch our channel, our, our videos, and um, you know, you know, we we love doing it. We love getting out there, having fun. But there might be some of you guys too that might have some kind of a medical ailment that prevents you from getting out or not getting out so much. And um, and there's know. not much knowledge around the, around kidney disease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, no one really knows and a bit much about it, and that that they think that once you're on dialysis, well, then you you you're, you're better sort of thing. But you're not better. You might go. You might have gone from 10% um, or 20%, you know, normality, and you might have got up to 50% in your ability to do things. But I'm certainly nowhere near 100% to what I was. 10 years ago, just nowhere near it. But I try every day to do what I can and at the best of what I can do. So and I think that's, yeah, but there's just not a lot of awareness out there. So this is to try and get a bit of knowledge out there as well for people and ask questions, ask as many questions as you like as well. Um, we're just actually up at Mount Cooper um, doing this, so we're just going to have our belated Valentine's lunch, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, over at the uh, lookout, isn't it? The, what's it the Mount Cooper lookout, the summit. Yeah. So um, we're going to go and have a bit of a look and uh, see what they got to eat, you know? Sounds what good. What do you reckon? Yep. We'll show you guys around anyway. This is just up at, um, where, where would we say this is from Brisbane? Oh, well, when we get to the top, we'll show you the city and then you'll We'll show you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's easy Sounds to good. show you. But it's out of just out of Brisbane, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. too far from Brisbane. Yeah, we've just driven down from Toowoomba, obviously. So yeah. yeah. All right, let's go get some of these. Oh, 
you as bad as the kids, eh? Yeah, it's ironic. <laughs> so where are we? Mount Kutar, according to Google. Yeah. Mount Kutar, according to us. Uh, Brisbane in the background. <laughs> Shocking day as far as... Uh, yeah, it's a bit breezy, a bit very overcast. Nah, it's not really a shocking day, <clears throat> but it's not good for taking photos anyway. No. So here we are, just had a bit of lunch up here. You can see uh, Brisbane City and then the yeah. river, just over there. Hopefully you, you can see the river, unless it's behind Michael's head. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? <laughs> Well guys, that brings our episode to an end. Uh, really appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, the main, the main uh, emphasis is that whatever you got, whatever health issues you got, you just got to get out there no matter what. Make a way, do things, work it out, and uh, get out there and enjoy life because uh, we don't know, you know, when we don't. We don't know if we don't know. No, we don't know. <laughs> guys, uh, I'll use the other bit of that. Do you want me to say it? Of the bit, yeah. Uh, welcome back to Prado 150 out of here. No, that's wrong too. Why? We're not welcoming back. We're saying oh, goodbye. Oh, okay. It's all so, right. I'll do it. I'll do it. So, Prado 150 and Mrs. Prado 150 are saying goodbye. Thanks for watching. Please I like hope. and subscribe our videos because it's just fantastic. Give us a like. And yeah, a subscribe. You, you gotta smile when your wife just does that, eh? Yeah. I'll do the give us a Anyway, like um, well, guys, that brings our episode uh, to an end. So, we, thanks for watching. Really appreciate your time today. Hope you got something out of it. Hopefully, we've inspired you in some way. Uh, the main part is that whatever is going on for you guys, or whatever the if you've got a health issue or whatever, you just got to make a way, get out there, make the most of it, and. Uh, do whatever you got to do to get out there and enjoy life because we don't know how long we got on this planet and uh, we don't know how long we got uh, while we're healthy so i just say get out there and do it eh? absolutely just get out of here that's it like if you got Prado kids, 150 if you got kids out of here. make sure they're out there as well enjoying life off their phones off their you know ipads all that kind of stuff so yeah take the kids drag them out yep Excellent. All right. Well, and, until uh, next time. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Yep. Sounds good, Shelley. Thanks for that. Yeah. Catch us all later, eh? See ya. Medical problems. Take two. No, that was alright. Oh, Shelley said that was alright. So we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll keep on going. <laughs> right. On my left. Just on the other because I'm going to stand. Oh, just okay. change the what do you want to talk about then? Hey? Something there, I don't know, am I alright so far? Yep, perfect. I'm just changing the shot. So my head's on it, is it? No. Yeah. Well, I can move over no, and no. you can sit beside me. You want your eyes Go again. Um, so, 
what was I talking about? Oh, my arm. Yeah, we're showing it this way. So oh, yeah. I don't, can you see it in the picture or not? Yeah. So I don't know if you... On yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah. Now, I say there's uh, Mr. Prado 150 out of there. He's uh, just taking some photos of the nice muddy car. Let's have a look out the door here. Let's have a look. Oh, just a bit of mud stuck on the uh, rock slide of there. Tripping off the car, dude. I lost my hat yeah. So, uh, Mr. Prado 150 out of here, give us your story here. You're looking a bit dirty there. I oh, know, we went through some mud and didn't get on the video properly. Just got it from the inside and then we did it from the outside. Oh, well, are you going to go back again or are you a bit scared yeah. now? <laughs> You got a bit of a bit of a dirty oh, but stomach then I now. Have to get out. Hey Chloe, what did you reckon? Where have you got to go? Oh, to get it. Yeah, and then I have to get it. Was out. a bit rough. And it was a bit rough going. We went bang. about others way before myself yeah i guess that's why i feel like i go through hell damn wasting time on your dreams instead of mine yeah about to turn this franchise around on a dime man it's all about finding your